Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our best of radio show. Radio show. Today we've got some of our top guests that we've had over the past months, and we've distilled it down to bring you two of the best so that you can get a jam-packed hour full of information. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the best of radio show for this week. Let me just kind of talk, just look at my list here and um, get consensus about the facts and the and their needs. Mm -hmm. I think I talked about that a little bit, but make sure you, everybody's understanding why you're selling Clear. when you need mm -hmm. need to. Sure. And then you're going to get into the facts of the of the property, the comparable sales. Mm -hmm. That's obviously you got to be prepared. Sure. Do your homework. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked about assuming the order and mm -hmm. just assume you're going to go f forward with it. Um, just continue through. Talk about, well, well this uh, this Friday I want to have the brokers open house. Mm -hmm. We need to have the property ready by Wednesday. Is that something that can work for you? And, you know, they might look at each other and say, well, not this week, maybe next week. Sure. Okay, we can do that. Mm -hmm. We can set it up. But now you've engaged them. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. So mm -hmm. you're getting them to commit to certain And making certain decisions things. on yeah. timing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. I think that's important. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. um I don't want to take no for an answer when I walk out. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're there. We're there to get the information. Mm -hmm. So what I do, I wouldn't say, are you ready to list with me? Sure. No. Let's do the paperwork. Mm -hmm. Let and, and I'm now taking notes again. Okay, we're going to have the open house on Friday, um, October 20th, or whatever the, the situation is. We're going to put the property on the market at this price, because we've talked about that. Sure. I'm skipping through a lot of fast you know areas sure but you've spent some time talking about market mm -hmm. and the pricing and all of that mm -hmm. and now you're going to move forward and say would you be comfortable if we put the home on the market for 759 mm -hmm. how do you feel about that price mm -hmm. all of those are are decisions that they need to make and you're making you're uh, making those decisions mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it takes a few of those conversations or those sentences to get them to where they need to be to sign yeah. the contract right um, so right. How how long do you go until you decide I'm not going to take this listing today? I guess I do. Again, I'm assuming we are mm -hmm. until they tell me otherwise. Uh huh. So they might say. So do you let them tell you no once or uh, multiple times? Multiple times. My goodness, you're hard. <laughs> you are tough. I don't think any. I don't think you're walking out the door without the listing. I'm yet. trying. Not good to. for you. Yeah. Okay. Good. I, it, the rule of thumb is take. Uh, you don't stop until you've seen, heard no three times. Holy smokes. Yeah. I like that rule. And that's, I'm going to use that one. That's really good. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think it's, it's going to, I think I'm going to win some more listings that way. No, I don't think it's harsh. I, <laughs> harsh. I think it's really good. Good. Yeah. So that's really, I think that's really what it's it's all about. Good. If if you're going to walk out without the listing, mm -hmm. you need to know why. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm preventing them, them from, from listing forward. today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you ask them, I would say. Oh, absolutely. Well, what's holding you back from moving right. forward today? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to interview another agent. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. Open-end questions mm -hmm. are so important. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Those words, oh my gosh, yeah. they'll give you so much information. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's not a direct question. It's yeah. Letting Could them, you elaborate on yeah. that a little bit? Yeah, then they yeah. have to. Yeah. <laughs> look, well, you look at them funny when they say they're going to you're going to know, somebody what? else, <laughs> yeah. but I'm the best. Yeah. How could you possibly be talking to someone else? Good. So that's really, I think that's, I think we really could narrow it down. If you are walking out without the listing, mm -hmm. what do you think you want to do? You want You're to asking them. Another, you want to another set another appointment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. When do you think you'll be ready to make a decision? Right. Mm -hmm. Or when, if they're interviewing multiple agents, when is the, the last interview? Well, maybe they say they want to sleep, sleep on it. Mm -hmm. So I just say, well, listen, I'll just sleep on the couch while you sleep on it. And then wake me up when you <laughs> Let make me a know. decision. Let me know. I'll be asleep right over here if yeah, you don't mind right. turning the TV on. Exactly. Good. I like that. I think that's a really good idea. Well, so let's back up a little bit because um, we do still have plenty of time. And uh, I just want to remind everyone that if you have any questions for Janet, please uh, type them in and I'll be happy to ask her. So let's just go back a little bit. So um, I do my presentation a little bit different. So maybe mm -hmm. you and I can communicate a little bit on that. So as far as my presentation goes, I bring it, bring the book that I was telling you about, mm -hmm. but I almost never open it. 
Occasionally I open it. I don't go page up to page. And by the way, I'm sharing this because this is what you and I talked about right. to share both. Right. This doesn't mean that the way I do it is right or wrong or the way or Janet does absolutely. it is right or wrong because there's so many different styles and the style has to be what's comfortable for the agent. Not, it can't be, it can't feel canned. It can't feel like you've copied someone else. It has to feel like it's you. Absolutely. And for me, I like to go into the appointment. I try to do a one-step appointment. So that's my goal is to get as much information as I can over the phone as far as their motivation goes, if they're interviewing anyone else, when they'll be making a decision, where they're going, that sort of thing. So I try to get as much information as in the beginning as I can. And actually we'll talk about the simplicity of a home versus the complexity of a home as well because that right. makes a big difference. Right. So oh, uh, I think a two-step presentation is um, very much in line if it's not a cookie cutter home. If mm -hmm. it's going to take a lot of research and important for you to get into that, get in the door in the beginning um, to see everything then you lead to go do your research. It's mm -hmm. just the way you do right. it. And that's that's pretty common and a lot of times very needed. In in some areas, like if you're a heavy farmer, which I'm a heavy farmer, maybe I know all the competition. Maybe I've sold a lot of it. So I can already talk intelligently about the last five model matches right, right. that have sold. So there isn't much I need to do other than saying, okay, you guys remodeled the kitchen. The last sale didn't. That sort of thing. So it's easy for me to do maybe a one Absolutely, step. Yeah. A one step. Yeah. So in some cases, I would do a two-step, and but I try to, I very much try to take the listing when I'm there the first time around and bring as much of the comparables as I can based on what I know about the home. I have certainly been stuck at the appointment and not, the prepared. Home, not prepared and the home is completely different than I thought or the tax record was wrong, which is a key yeah. point to check on the tax record or, or question them. So I understand your house is 1711 square feet. Um, is, that, is that the case? Is it a three bedroom, two and a half bath? Very often the tax record's incorrect. And so obviously that's important to know when you, sure. when you go in on the appointment. And then once I'm there, I like to find out once I walk through the home, which is the first thing I do, walk through the home just like you, build that rapport, uh, find out what they love about the home. Then I want to find out what is important to them in an agent? Because to me, I feel like people are in a hurry. They mm -hmm. don't have the time to spend a lot of time on a listing presentation. So it feels like, from, and maybe I am mirroring myself. <laughs> so maybe it's actually me that doesn't want to be there for a long time, and I want to get in and out. Mm -hmm. But I like to find out what is it that's important. So the things that I find that are important to sellers are price. Maybe that is the number one concern. They're going to go with the agent who tells them that the house is worth the most. Then I know what I need to deal with while I'm at the presentation. Wow, they're way overboard on price. I need to focus my attention on that. Maybe it's commission. That's a big one these days. Yeah. Maybe it's all about commission. Okay, let's dive into that. Because what I find is so often it's one-pointed. The, their big concern is one thing. One thing. Right. It's commission. It's how are you going to market this home? Or moving fast or, or moving yes, slow. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 It, it, maybe, it's, maybe it's this. Our last agent listed our home and we never spoke to them again. So to them, the most important thing is communication. Guess what you're going to talk about a lot? We're going to talk about the means of communication, you're going to find out do they want to be texted, do they want to be emailed, do they want phone calls, how often, and setting that up because that's what they want to hear. So um, I, that's how I like to, to come about it. Are, am I interviewing? Is it, is it about competition? What is it about? Then I delve in on that. Some people are all about marketing, and then you find out that they're maybe all about uh, print advertising. And that's traditional marketing, and there's nothing wrong with traditional marketing. I think there's a place for traditional marketing. But the abundance of online buyer-centered housing information, of course, has reshaped consumer buying behavior today. So it turns, it turns out that it, the, the traditional process has reshaped the real estate buying process. So we maybe need to turn them from the print advertising to maybe social media, online advertising, all that kind of thing, because um, may, for me, I don't like to do a bunch of print advertising. It's very, it's very expensive and ineffective. So maybe I need to sell them on why it's important to do more online uh, 
more online mm -hmm. sort of marketing and show them statistics. That's where people are are buying their home these days. They are calling their realtor once they've narrowed down their search. And they've narrowed down their search on what? The internet. So there's lots of those kinds of things. I think we have a question. So I'm going to look at a question from Pablo. And it says, would you run comps in front of the potential client? So I'm thinking that he means you'd have your laptop there right. with you or your right. iPad with well, you. Well, I would hope that you would be prepared before you ever walk in the door. Even on appointment number one? Well, on a, oh, in appointment number one, I would not do it. Not no. do it. Okay. No. no. Okay. I, I think that you need to demonstrate to the client that you do do homework. Sure. It doesn't come out of your head. Sure. Because then that's easy. Mm -hmm. Anybody can do it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. What you want to you want to um, uh, emphasize is that your expertise and your homework and you're narrowing it down to their specific home. I think is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I, I don't you you know I don't I don't know if you do but I don't I don't get into um, comps on the on the computer when I'm sitting mm -hmm, mm -hmm. unless you might want to show them sure this uh, let me show you a, a comparable sale here that's that closed last sure, week sure and you want to actually show them the facts mm -hmm. all of it that would be great mm -hmm. yeah yeah I, I mean don't that's typically kind of either. an assistant sure yeah sure that makes yeah. sense and I don't typically either I think that's a good question but if I need to I will because you have at your fingertips, if you have your laptop or your iPad there, you have at your fingertips the pictures of the other listings. Mm -hmm. And sometimes why I like showing other listings is to show the difference in the quality of photography between my listing and the other listing down the street. Mm -hmm. And why they would want to go with me because I have a professional photographer come in versus the other agent who took pictures from their smartphone right. and uploaded them. Yeah. That to me is enormously different and that's your as well. List, that's what really is your listing appointment, yeah. your listing presentation. Sure. Whether it's verbally and showing them on your iPad, you're doing your listing presentation while you're sitting sure. uh, sitting with them at the table. Mm -hmm. At the table, yeah. not at the couch. Yeah. Good. Cool. Well, let's go to your eight tips for giving winning listing presentations. Obviously, you've been doing this for so many years. You are incredibly successful, and um, I personally know that you take almost 100% of the listings well, that you go on that, because but. you are so good. So give us some, some pointers, give us some well, last minute just, tips. Yeah, let's just quickly review these. Um, it's pretty much everything we've talked about already, but uh, set the expectations up front. The two-part appointment or a one-part appointment, mm -hmm. whatever, but set up the expectations. What do you expect? Mm -hmm. You expect all sellers to be present. Mm -hmm. That's what you're doing. You're expecting to, you're expecting to walk out of there um, getting their house on the market. Mm -hmm. um, gather your data. Mm -hmm. Know the client, know the property, know their motivation. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've talked about that. This is really just a review. Sure. Build your relationship. Mm -hmm. That's, if you don't build a relationship to begin with, before you start talking about the comps, that's not going to work. I agree. You've got to have a relationship. Know your audience. Mm -hmm. Know what, who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. What's their motivation? What's their hot button? Which you just spend a little bit of time talking about what mm -hmm. is their hot button. Mm -hmm. And that takes and marketing, asking the right questions. Asking the questions. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Knowing that. Mm -hmm. You've got to know your audience. You need to do your homework. Be prepared. That's that's obviously preparation is all about. Sure. If you walk in there and you can't talk mm -hmm. the talk, mm -hmm. you're not going to walk out mm -hmm. of there without the listing. So I want to point something out on that because that's such a good point. So um, this, I think, probably most agents have, have come across this in their career if they've been, or been selling for a long time. I had a past client that thought that I was the end-all, be-all agent. He thought I did such a fantastic job when I sold his house the first time. And several years later, he called me and said, Gina, I'm now going to sell. Can you come over and talk to me? And I went on that appointment completely unprepared. I absolutely assumed I'd walk away with the listing. Mm. Had the listing in hand, I, all I did was bring comparables. That's it. I was ready to sign the listing and put the price in on what we decided. And he wouldn't sign the listing and said that, I was, that he was interviewing two other agents after me. And I did not get that listing. Okay. I did yeah. not get the listing. Yeah. Huge. You took it for granted. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And you didn't go back to the basics. Mm -hmm. We all, as yep. experienced people, get do that sometimes. It was a yeah. very, yeah. very tough mistake to make, yeah. but it was a great learning experience, and I'll never walk into a listing again yeah. assuming, assuming that it's mine That's right. and, and not prepared. Yeah. Even on those ones that I 
almost 100% sure that it, it, it's my listing, I'm going to go prepared because they have an expectation of that. That's right. Absolutely. So, okay, so communication, communicate your findings. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're the advisor. Mm -hmm. You've got to talk about price. If sure. they had a price that was so out of line, you're the advisor. You've got to guide them. So make sure that you communicate your findings uh, in the best way you They're can. They're hiring you for your professional exactly. advice. Mm -hmm. You're the advisor. Mm -hmm. You're not just saying, well, what do you want to put it on the market for? Sure. No, you're the advisor. Mm -hmm. You're going to help them say, here's what I would recommend. How do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and go from there. Be clear and concise. And we talked about this before, but assume the order. Mm -hmm. Walk out of there with a listing. Of sure, care. sure. And a, a handshake, and you're going to work to get their house on the market. That's my favorite one. Assume the order. I yes. hope everyone got that. Assume the order. Yeah. I think that's so cool. So the topic, first topic we have for today is how to triple your open house leads with first alert. And first alert's a tool, so we're going to talk about the tool. Then we're also just going to get real scientific. Rich uh, knows a tremendous amount about open house. Uh, so we're going to get not only focus on the tool, but also the how. So, um, Rich, you've worked with the team here to roll out a plan that help ag helps agents triple their open house leads. And that tool is first alert. It's a combination of a tool and scripts and dialogues and uh, maybe a mindset shift to how you're going to handle open house. So, but let's start with the tool, and then we'll get into the how. So, tell me what First Alert is. Uh, great name, by the way. But tell me what it is, how it works. Break it down for me. All right, sounds good. Well, thanks for having me on the show this morning, Keith. Really appreciate it. Well, uh, actually, it's kind of a brainchild of uh, Kathy Harrington and mine. Uh, we were thinking about all the people that have been coming in open house out in the field in San Francisco. We've had anywhere from fifty to a hundred. We had a hundred and thirty people in one open house a few weeks ago, and I'll talk about when we get into holding open house, how uh -huh. you can get that much traffic, what we did to do that. Okay. But we we're trying to figure out what is a better way to capture leads. And uh, with inventory so low, we've noticed that a lot of buyers are not able to get an offer in in time in order to get the property. It's gone. Mm -hmm. So we thought that we would reposition our property alerts into a um, a more marketable system that when people come into open house, they would understand uh, what property alert really means. And so Kathy and I came up with the name First Alert. Kathy put together all the marketing around it. And basically what it is is when somebody comes into your open house, you would want to be positioned probably in the kitchen, guarding your laptop or your tablet <laughs> or okay. iPad. Mm -hmm. And when they come in, there's a marketing piece that will be located right next, kind of a stand-up uh, on a stand. We've got explaining a, what. Yeah. We'll show them a sample of that. In yeah, a bit. yeah. Yep. So explaining what first alert is, and they'll go right on the uh, tablet or the computer and type in all the information, their information, and what type of property they're looking for, so they would get notified instantly when these properties come on the market. Hence, first alert. Mm -hmm. um, we've done. We didn't call it first alert, but we've done a couple of these out in uh, San Francisco. We've got about a, almost a seventy percent of the people that come in go in and fill this out. In mm -hmm. fact, I had one agent who was not around, was talking to somebody, turned around, and people were filling it out without being asked. Line formed, waiting to spot right, that right. information. And if you think about it, this is a lot more effective than the open house registration. Right. Because this is, they're putting in the property they want, they see a benefit mm -hmm. uh, to being alerted right away. Mm -hmm. And a key field in the form also is, do you have a house that you need to sell? We found about 25 to 30 percent of the people coming into open house own a property and they may need to move it. Mm -hmm. And then it also asks them, would you like a market analysis? Would you like to know what it will bring on today's market? Uh, so this is also an opportunity to get listing leads. So then they're automatically put into the uh, first alert or our property alert system. Right. On the agent side, mm -hmm. this isn't the agent website form is what's up. So it goes into their client relationship manager system. Mm -hmm. So it uh, instantly it's engaging their clients for them. And so then of course the follow up in the following weeks is what's critical based right. on how they fill the form out. So let's let's there's a lot in that. So right. let's kind of take this piece by piece. Mm -hmm. What we're really looking to do is unlock the buyer's demand, right? Right. The buyer is getting their teeth kicked in, they're writing four or five offers, right. and they're stressed out, freaked out mm -hmm. by the process. Right. 
So having a tool that will give them first alert, quick access, right? Yeah. We're rebranding a tool we already have, right? But put positioning it as we can help you find properties faster. If you find properties faster, maybe you can get a quick first mover advantage. All right. Get the house maybe you actually want, right. not your third or fourth first, or fifth choice. Right, 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 right. And here's the big plus to this and why this is important in open house. First of all, there's a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. So walking around and trying to close people appointment is going to be tough, and then you may lose the real good buyers while you're trying to close an appointment over here in the open house. Because three people walk in at the same time, and you just right. have to guess who looks like they're exactly. the buyer that's going to work. Exactly. Yeah. That's why Kathy's put together a great promotional piece. It'll sit there standing right next to your laptop, so if you are talking to somebody, it's pretty self-explanatory. It looks really good. So uh, that's key. But here's what I really love about this system. If they're not willing to fill out a form that will alert them on properties that meet their criteria, then they're not an A or B buyer. Right. And how many agents are running around buyers right now that are really are never going to purchase? We've all done it mm -hmm. as agents. Yep. We've worked with buyers that didn't buy. If somebody comes in and sees, wow, I'll know when my house comes up on the market right. instantly. My criteria, what I'm Right. Doing. And fills it out, they're a buyer. If not, they weren't a buyer. Great. And maybe there might be another thing, well, but they might have already filled out another, mm -hmm. you know, update form. A really motivated buyer, if they see something that they mm -hmm. believe will give them a first mover advantage, right. then they will fill out two, three, four. They won't care. True. Because what they're really motivated to do is to find their house. That's right. all they really care about. Well, that's where the branding comes in, this mm -hmm. first alert. I think it really, people may be on systems like that, but this branding and this marketing of it makes it sound like, you know, it is the first alert. I want to be the first. I may be on a uh, getting property sent to me, but this one sounds like it's faster just because of the name. Uh, so I think anybody that seriously wants to purchase a property uh, would, would see this as an advantage and fill out the form. And, so and we, we've tested it, and, we and just, they do. We just pulled up the, right. the sample yep. of the freestanding. Yep. And that is the... Um, East Bay, Court, you know, that's mm -hmm. the suburban look. Right. We also have a San metro look, look for San Francisco type properties. But yeah, the one they're looking at now is what will be set up right next to the uh, to your laptop or your tablet. And I'm sure if someone was really passionate about it, mm -hmm. they could drop in photos. I'm looking at Kathy. She's yeah. she's slowly nodding her head. Yeah. So yeah, so if you if it didn't work for the wine country, you could drop uh -huh. in five wine country shots. Right. It's just five photographs. Uh, so we could unlock some of that so that right. we make sure it fit to the local market. Yep. So yep. this this flyer that we see standing would mm -hmm. be a display that's next to a computer. That has the actual form. The, and they would just fill out and name, then hit email submit. address, bedroom, bath, count, price point. Right. Do you need to sell a house? Do you need to sell a house? Right. How, is there a lot of information that they need? No, is the that key pretty much is it? just the minimum because if you have a long big form, they're going to say, well, can you send us the link? We'll fill it out later. Mm -hmm. That's what will happen. It's got. They have to look at the form and go, you know what, I can knock this out really quickly. Let's do it now. That's the key to the form. Okay. So really is. Not, you're not looking to get warm peace from them. No. You're looking to get enough so that the search has value right. and capture their email address. Exactly. That's really exactly. the goal. And the key will be, once they fill out these forms and they start receiving property alerts, the key will be the follow-up phone call. Right. Now, do we do you get a phone number from everyone? Is uh, it optional it's or mandatory? optional okay. on the form. Okay. Uh, but the one thing that we will also offer out when we release this is our call center. Okay. Through um, the home, home loan group, group. Mm -hmm. here centrally. So let's say you have an open house, you have 100 people and 40 people fill this out. You're not comfortable with closing on the phone. Sure. We've got a script that we'll give the call center to follow up on these leads for you, mm -hmm. all right? So that Great is leverage. a big plus. Great yes, leverage. well, because the home loan group's looking for some loans. Nothing like home loan group calling you and saying, oh, by the way, we followed up. We got them pre-qualified for $750,000. And they'd like to find something this weekend. Right. I mean, that's really working, you know, the mortgage company and the real estate together. Yep. Uh, and they'd love to do that for the agents. So, Absolutely. So what I think we've pulled up here is mm -hmm. the fields, sort of minimum, maximum fields that 
Some are optional, some aren't. First, last, and email. Right. It looks like is required. Yep. Pretty much everything else after that is optional. Yes. I mean, they're going to put in city. They're going to put in right. price range, bed, and bath because that's right. why they're there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like, even if they aren't thinking about selling their home, they can still learn the value of their home. So right. It may not be as far in the sales funnel yet. They may just be beginning to think about exactly. selling. And a lot of them coming to an open house are just getting started. And the beauty is... If they're looking for the value of their home, then you attach the drip campaign that we have that is specific for sellers. And right. Let that drip campaign train them to use that agent when it comes time to sell. And same thing on the buyer side. Great. Uh, a couple questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, one from Jackie wants to know, uh, will this work on an iPad? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Confirmed. Yep, we've already done it on an iPad. Fact, yeah, and we want that's the best thing really to use is a tablet. Is a tablet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the laptop most definitely. The tablet makes it you know just look a little cooler. You know what I mean? I can't help but go down into the weeds. Mm-hmm. So, should an agent carry this with them and try to register the client? Is it better if it just sits out? I what, think you know. How did you uh, test it to get those I, great the results? best thing? You know, is first of all, if you talk about open house, you know, it, whenever you walk into a retail shop. And you walk in, you may be a, a car dealership or a furniture store. Right when you walk in, somebody says, hey, how you doing? What can right. I do for you today? Your first response is always, just, just looking. looking. Yep. So your best bet is to let them wander around the house, but be anchored in the kitchen. Because they're always going to come in there with that um, iPad and then the marketing piece right next to it and saying, would you like to be one of the first ones to know when a house meets your criteria comes on the market? All you have to do is fill this little form out here online. Uh, that's what I'd be doing all day if I was an agent. Just that right there mm-hmm. as they come into the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, how it's set up to, to work. And hold the flyers. That's another thing I used to do. Yep. Very I good. I would always, I'd yeah. hide all the flyers, mm-hmm. and the only flyers in the building were in my hand. Right. Because everybody is Pavlovianly trained to want a flyer. Right. So hang out in the kitchen because it's a great central location. Mm-hmm. Keep the flyers in your hand because they'll find you to get their flyer right. every right. time. So they and have then to don't, say hello. And then when you hand it to them, Ask them, so how long have you been looking? Exactly. And you don't let go until they answer. Right, so, right, right. I've had tug of wars. With yeah. flyers. <laughs> they, they, got half, they got half a flyer. From me. Exactly. Uh, another quick question, mm-hmm. um, and this is just real technical mm-hmm. uh, because, you know, not every office has a home loan group. Right. Loan officer. Does that right. matter? Or no. They all have access to the nope. calls. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. They have central loan officers that would take that uh, if, um, if there was a loan possible. Yep. Great. There you have it, two of our best guests that we've had over the last few months that we brought back for you to make sure that you're continuing to get the great information that we always want to provide. Thanks so much for tuning into the radio show this week, and we'll be back live next week.